What's up, everybody? Benjamin Holiday and Mark Lane with On Your Mark Worldwide. Welcome back to another FAQ Fridays. Go ahead and take it away, Mark, because you're so used to this, I really can't. <laughs> That's all good. So for those who are just tuning in or have been following us, uh, FAQ Fridays where you guys, the audience, have asked Ben and I questions relating to health, uh, fitness, nutrition, um, things that promote mindset fortitude, organizational skills, ways that help you guys get to your goals either on a physical level or even on a mental level. So. Yeah. So yeah, you are more than welcome to ask us questions here live, we'll answer for you, and if we don't know the answer, I guess we just so we don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll take our perspective, our understanding, our the lens that we have been, been created throughout our lives up until this point, and then put it through, right, to you guys. So, we can't start off today without saying, Happy Valentine's Day in a couple days. Happy Valentine's Week, right? So hopefully you guys have someone that you care about that you get to spend some time with and to show your appreciation for. And if not, you still get yourself, right? So it's always good to have appreciation for yourself. It's true, you wanna have self-love just as much as you wanna have love for others. So keep that in mind, right? So even if you're alone on Valentine's Day, you're realistically not alone. You've got yourself and you can be happy with that. So that's good. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys don't have any questions, I know it will take a bit for you guys to jump on here to get to, to get into uh, the live, to see it, to, to jump in here and interact with us. But um, we have some questions that we have come across, that have come across our way, that have come into our viewpoint, have been asked to us throughout the week from last FAQ Friday, and we want to present those to you and talk those through. Um, you know, it's pretty crazy with the progression of this year, even though it's just started, right? It seems like, to me, it just seems like it's really going. There's so many things happening, so many things constantly changing. You know, it's not like we've gotten to a steady normal yet. Even though we have, we, we keep trying to find a normal and then they keep changing it on us, right? And it's like, oh, come on. Let's, let's get back to some kind of real life. Let's get back to something that feels good and we're like, all right, all right, we'll finally calm down. So there's so much stuff with that, right? With the way that the vaccines have been rolling out, with the way that people have been changing their viewpoints on all that, with the way that our 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 um our what's the what's the term? Our government I don't want to say registration, what the hell am I trying to think of? The way that our government legislation? Legislation? Yeah, yeah so our government legislation, how they're doing things, how they're reacting to things, the things they said before, and how what they say now. Uh, it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> and then the whole process of having to get COVID tested, you know, for everybody out there, and then of course our jobs, still trying to figure out what's going on with that. It's a pretty crazy time. So hopefully you guys are getting some kind of normalcy in your own life. Hopefully you guys are getting some kind of repetition to be like, all right, I found a routine again. I feel pretty good. I may have to wear two masks or something weird like that. But I mean, you kind of roll with it, right? Hopefully you guys can roll with it. And hopefully you can take, take, some, take some good, uh, what's the word? I keep wanting to say solace, but take some good you time, right? Take some time for yourself this weekend and really enjoy it, right? Do something nice for yourself and be creative, right? Because we only have so much available for us right now with opportunities of going out, opportunities to be with people, right? There's only so much we can do, unfortunately, still. But if we're creative, we can find some really cool things that we can do with ourselves or with people in our immediate circle that we're allowed to be with, right? Or at home or whatever. If you're stuck at home, there's some cool stuff you can do at home. You just gotta look some stuff up. I mean, the internet is so amazing. You just start typing away, like, what are some cool things to do while you're stuck at home? And there are so many people that have jumped on board to give you guys ideas. Look that stuff up. You'll be like, huh, that looks like that'd be pretty cool. So with that, which is like really rolling into basically what's going on, how we, how we feeling about FAQ Fridays, how we feeling about today, in this year, in 2021, where we're at. Do you guys feel good about your, your exercise routines? <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> so anyways. Mark, do you, have a, do you have a question that you want to yeah, you approach? Yeah. You got something going on with anybody else that's come on live? Or? At the moment, no, not at the moment. But let's see here, what we got going on here. Wow. No, no questions live at the moment, but I know we have some previous questions from earlier today. Um, so for those who have actually follow us on um, onyourmarkworldwide.fit on Instagram, um, I put up a quick story question up there. So for, you, for those who can't actually make it here live, you guys are more than welcome to Post your questions on there. Um, so yeah, we got a few of those going on. So I think you have a few of them already written down. Yeah, yeah, I do actually. Um, <clears throat> so if you don't mind, I actually would hoping to actually. You know what? I take it back. I'll start with one for me. So there's one that's kind of in line with what I was just talking to you guys about. 
with about how we feel right now in our current situation and right now with it being so close to Valentine's Day, right? Like, how does that, how does that become an issue with the fact that everything that I just mentioned, all these, all these preventiveness, I don't know what's the right word, all this stuff that's preventing us from doing the things we really want to do. So the question is, how do you, okay, so how do you deal with, how do you deal with the feelings of isolation and staying positive during COVID, right? So how do we deal with the feelings of being isolated and then how do we stay positive, right? So all that, like I was saying, everything's basically changing all the time still, right? We're still having issues with, we had a norm, it got broken pretty hard, we started to try to get a norm, they changed it a bit, we tried to get a norm again, they changed it again, it's like they're just flip-flopping all over the place with how they, it feels like they're trying to keep us from being normalized. <laughs> but you, you never know, I mean, the way the world works, everything kind of goes crazy, right? Things happen, we hope for a reason, but if you think of it in that way, it makes it feel like, I hope it wasn't for a reason. <laughs> so, but anyways, so how do we deal with that? How do you guys deal with that, right? Like, think about that. Where are you guys at right now, and how do you deal with the isolation? How do you feel, right? It's like, obviously, isolation is not good for human beings, right? Psychologically, physically, we need to have interaction with other people. Our body gives off energy, right? We know that we have energy inside ourselves. Our, our heart gives off electromagnetic pulses, and we feel that amongst each other. We feel that, right? So if we feel like we have a, a good state of mind, good state of being, there's a certain frequency, if you, if you will, that comes off of you, and people feed off of that, or can feed off of that, or... Not necessarily feed off like vampires or whatever, but feed off it in the sense that that could promote something within them. That could be positive, right? So with you being isolated, you don't get that interaction very much anymore. And we really need that. And what's also cool too is we get something like that from nature, right? From trees and from the earth itself gives off an electromagnetic pulse as well. So if they're surrounded by concrete and a bunch of stuff, a lot of that gets blocked off. So that's why like forest bathing is really important. So even though you may be isolated, you may be in a place that, like, let's say you're, like, in or inner city, right? You just don't have anywhere to go forest bathing, or, you know, without, like, an extensive drive or something. You just don't have time because of the way your work is and it has to be at home and whatever, right? So let's say the only thing you have is brick and asphalt everywhere. Well, cool thing about forest bathing is even though it's obviously better for you to be amongst trees, and even more better for you to be amongst people, of course, but... It has a very similar effect with the human mind and the human psyche if you look at trees, right? If you get like a picture in your um, a picture on your laptop or on your phone or something of just like you going through nature, or like somebody else went through nature, say like it's a point of view, and someone's going through nature, you just kind of stare at that for a while. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel calm, right? So that's something that you can help with your feelings. Give yourself a, a bit of time throughout the day to where you forest bathe, whether it's actually in a forest or on like a screen or something, right? Give yourself that time to kind of relax, like watch planet Earth or something. Give you some like naturistic viewpoints for your, for your body to take in, to give yourself some calmness. <clears throat> but there's so many other things that you can do. That's just like one little tip that you could do right now. Because most people, they want to interact with people, right? We just want to, we need it, we survive that way. Literally a human being will die if it does not interact with another human being. Of course, that's like in the very beginning stages, but it I mean, it's stronger in the beginning stages. When you're older, it's, it still can manifest that way as well. Just you have more coping mechanisms. You have more things that you can do. You have more realization of your own consciousness. So you can change, make, you know, do different things to, to change that feeling. To be like, I know there's going to be somebody around eventually, right? When you're a baby, you don't know. You're just like, there's nobody there. There's, there's nothing for me to be here for. And you die. That's freaking crazy. But that's important to know, right? It's important to know how much that means to the human psyche and the human body, that we need that interaction. <clears throat> so again, it's important for you to find things that you can do to help balance yourself out, right? So that was dealing with the feelings and there's also staying positive, right? So staying positive is finding things that you enjoy. So there are some things that you enjoy that are outside, right? We all have things that we really enjoy doing, like enjoy running, we enjoy going to a park, we enjoy spending time with family members, with friends, we enjoy doing things, activities, going to the mall. Climbing, right? So I used to do a lot of climbing out in the wilderness, right? In places where they'd set stuff up and just have fun out there, right? You can hang out with people, you force bait, and you climb, do something fun. So without getting too much into that, what we really need to know, or what people would, I imagine, want to know, <clears throat> is what can I do now? <clears throat> what can I do in my situation where I am now with my limitations? 
So think about it. Do you have any ideas? Do you have any things? Like, give us a, give us a comment in the chat what you guys do. What do you guys do right now that helps you to, to have a good feeling, right? To help you feel good and for you to stay positive, right? So feeling a positive, staying positive, <clears throat> and moving in a positive light. Being able, to, being able to sit like this and feel good about yourself throughout the day instead of being like, these days suck. Right? We, we know that they can suck, but we have the choice, we have the opportunity to change our mindset, to change our state of mind, and if we practice it, it'll get stronger. Right? So there's a lot of people who haven't practiced it yet, it'll be difficult. Right? So with anything that we do, we do for the first time, it's hard. And that's a good thing to understand, too. We know that it's hard in the beginning, but we should also know that if we step through it, if we do it, do a little bit, do a little bit, it'll be easier the next time. You can do more the next time. You can do more the next time. It's amazing how much that that applies to like everything else in your life, right? You can apply it to anything, apply it to exercise, apply it to diet, apply it to work, apply it to relationships, apply it to your finances. You can apply it to everything. If you take that step, start it, and then it becomes easier, it becomes easier, it becomes easier the more you do it. So find activities, find things that you enjoy that you can do with those limitations, right? You just have to be creative. You just have to think a little bit. You just have to allow yourself to open your mind a bit to new opportunities, right? Just what can I do, right? And then it'll give you things to choose from rather than trying to come up with it yourself. Because sometimes that's hard. Sometimes you can't. Like the way that my brain has been cultivated is in a way that I can do recognition way better than recall. So I, if I give, get a list of things, right, or a group of things to choose from, I'm way better at finding the right thing for me or like, yep, that's it right there. Rather than what was the, you know, like, now, what's your favorite color is kind of a bad, bad example, but <clears throat> something to that effect. Like, hey, where was that one thing? Or what is your favorite place to go? Or something like that. If I had a list of them, I'd be like, oh, we have that one, right? So some people have that same thing going on in their mind, their way of being able to pull things from themselves. If they don't have that, then look for the options that will uh, resonate with you, right? Something that pulls itself to be like, wow, that seems like fun. I could try that, right? I want to bring up some time, some memory of the time that you have done that in the past and like remember that it was joyous. Remember that you had fun with that. <clears throat> so think about that stuff. Think about all these different things that you can do <clears throat> and then explore. Like I already know I have some stuff that I can do if that becomes boring, which sometimes it does, especially with how long this is lasting. So find new things, right? Talk to other people, ask, find out what you can do. <clears throat> So I think that's a, I think that's a good synopsis of that. What do you do? You have anything to add to that? Well, okay. So there's a couple of things I definitely want to add to that. So you talk about memory recall versus recognition. Mm -hmm. I was trying to find a, a good metaphor to describe that. And I think based on what you told me, it'd be something like if you wanted to tell me where someone lives, are you the kind of person who knows the address, or if you know, do you know like mile markers in a way? Like, hey, I have to get right here at this tree, and then left here at the stop sign. I know I can get this person's house. Or some people are just like. This person lives on, on 247 Oakland Drive or something like that. Like, they just happen to know these. Like, it's weird how people can figure out how one can memorize or put promote memorization skills in order for them to figure out what they need to remember. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, when you talk about recall versus recognition, is it the kind of that same, is that like the same concept? Yeah, so basically, it's like. <clears throat> If you were to say, where does this person live? I could probably pull up a picture of the front of their house or inside of their house or something like that, right? So like where you would park or like a front picture or some, something like to that effect. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that's where they live. <clears throat> and then I might be able to associate it with a city name. <clears throat> and if I'm really, if I uh, recall, if I have um, put their address in there in a specific way that it's attached to something, attached to a picture or whatever, like I had a picture of the address, or something like that, then I could probably recall it like that too. But for directions, that's an interesting thing for me. For in order to say, how do you get to that person's place? <clears throat> it's a lot harder for me to do that. I have to start driving in what looks familiar. And what's unfortunate about that too, so like I said, give you a bunch of options and like which one looks familiar or or grabs at it, like, oh yeah, that's recognizable, that's recognizable, that's recognizable. So I don't have it already laid out of things to recognize. I go and start to recognize. <clears throat> so as I start driving, I'm like, okay, do I go left or right? And sometimes it'll mix with everything else. Yeah. Like when I was in Ohio, I would go out of my house and go left or right, right? And then from that point, there was another fork <clears throat> on either side. <clears throat> so I'm like, outside of my house, I'm like, I would forget 
Do I go right to get to this city or to this thing because everything was like a half hour away? Or do I go left to get to this city or this place? Like if I head in this direction, this would be associated with that. But it was four years and I still couldn't remember which direction I needed to go in order to get to where I needed to go. And even still as I was driving, and if, if the lighting changed, it would block it all out. Like I would, I would recognizability goes out the window because it had to be in that lighting way, that framework. It has to be the same framework or else it's just like, I'll get lost and it takes a while for me to recognize stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so even at night when I'm like driving somewhere and I'm trying to recognize some things, I'll be like, I have no idea. Right? Even if I've done it over and over and over and over, and over again, I'll be like, I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I ask that is because like for me to remember things very well, I remember things very numerically, I guess you could say the best mm -hmm. way. So like if someone told me that, hey, you need to exit off of Almaden Expressway, well, I compute better saying, hey, take exit 85. Like, that seems to register me better than saying, mm -hmm. hey, getting off at home and express oh, that So, like, when I drive on freeways and stuff like that, it's like, cool, I know that, I know that Siri or whoever I'm listening to is guiding my way to whatever my destination may be. It's like, yeah, they will tell me the name, but the name doesn't compute. So a lot of times I look for the exit number, and that computes mm -hmm. with me way more than, than the actual... I guess the name of the street. Or yeah, that, that's interesting. What's funny is like, so, you know, everybody's like, oh, you're dependent on your cell phones now, you're dependent on your um, GPS or whatever. I was dependent on that before there was a GPS. Like, I was dependent on that by MapQuest or by, I would always have, <laughs> I would always have a Thomas guy, right? It was like an Atlas. I always have a Thomas guy in my car. And I had to, or else I couldn't get anywhere. Yeah. I had to flip to the page that was in the city where I was, and I, would, I, I knew how to go to which page, to which page, or whatever, depending on which part of the map that it goes off of, go to this section or whatever. So I had to have that in my car all the time. There were several times when I didn't have it, and I was in a place, and I had to buy one. I, I found the nearest gas station, I had to buy one. And I would buy it, and I would look it up, be like, where am I right now, where do I need to go, and then I was able to get somewhere. So it's funny, I used to travel like that all the time. Um, I think... One of the first times I ever traveled up north was like Oregon and Washington. It was like, okay, I'm gonna get a map and I'm gonna like straight up like figure out where all my rest stops are. I'm gonna stop here and I'm stop here and here. Like just actually like taking a highlighter and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going. And that's pretty much how I grew up. And so like even when I occasionally have to travel, where am I gonna have to travel? Say I'm going up north to Oregon or whatever. I still have to in some way figure out or at least put pins throughout my travels to figure out where I need to stop. If I'm trying to figure out time wise, like, okay, I gotta train a client around this time. Maybe I can get to this particular pin here by, you know, X amount of time. If I get there early, then I can just wait there or whatever it may be. But it's, I, I seem to travel more when I know the, the path. Like, in oh, that yeah, sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, so things like MapQuest, for all those who don't know what that was, that's why you have to know what Tom Scott was. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, no one under 20 is going to know what that is. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I was like, they probably know what an atlas is, maybe. World map, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, Road ways. Yeah, like, I, remember, I remember even having a job that was like that, where like, I had to go around the neighborhoods and turn off people's water. <laughs> yeah. <it> was, <laughs> the only thing that's going to that He was the guy. T, T. Yeah. I, it's, it's called a uh, DTO, delinquent turn on and off. And for example, I used to work for like, a water company for a little bit. And so if you had a new house, like, hey, you need to turn on your water. Hey, I'm the cool guy then. But yeah. if you didn't hear <laughs> effing bills, oh, dude, I'd be in there like ninja, like, uh, they leave the, they leave the house? Uh, and then turn off, and then just bounce. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, but, even if, but to know where people's houses were and where their water line was, I, that, wasn't, that wasn't like a Siri thing. It wasn't like, go put the address right, yeah. in your phone and look for it. It was like, no, I, I got a map, or if I had to, I'd print out the map and then highlight accordingly and like do my, do my, uh, like my trail or whatever it may be. But it was like, okay, well, these houses are located in these locations. All right, what's the most efficient way to go from point A to point B and then, you know, A through Z and then make sure that by the time I'm done, I can finish back to like the home base, right? So that was, that was totally how my, um, how my uh, pizza delivering service was too. My, my pizza <laughs> service. So when I worked for Papa John's and I worked for Domino's, it was the same thing. They're like, okay, you, you get a stack of orders or whatever, and then you see their addresses, you find their addresses, and be like, okay, they go this one first, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and, this one, and circle back. And they're like, all right, write down all your turns and everything. I need to turn right here, turn left here, turn there, turn there, turn there. And you, well, luckily, when I was in Hemet, I had a good understanding of the streets, so I could have like main markers and be like, all right, when I go to this street, this street is cross street, cool, I know how to get there, and then the other little ones or whatever. And the hardest thing 
was apartment complexes like the one I'm in now, or the one that we're in now. It was so hard to be like, you need to get to this apartment complex address, the building, which is somewhere in that complex, and then the actual apartment itself within that building. So sometimes it would be ridiculously hard because you can't always see the numbers. The numbers aren't always there. And you're just yeah. like looking at the map and then the map doesn't make sense. <clears throat> so, oh my gosh, that was terrible. But it gave you a bit of a, a challenge to overcome in how to prioritize and how to step through certain processes, right? I need to get from here to here. Here's my challenge. Here are the things in the way. This is how I need to get there. And then the whole time allocation, or not time allocation, but uh, time, management. time management. Yeah. yeah. And then time management, right? So like, how much time do I have available in order to get this done, in order to get through here? And I had the same thing with the furniture company. I was a furniture moving company. I had to get all this furniture out to all these people throughout the whole day. Like, we have a 12, 16-hour window. We have to get all these orders. We pull all the orders. Like, it should take us this long to get here, this long to get there, this long to get there, this, put it out, this long, this long, this long, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes we had really, really long days and we were really, really late. So, but anyways, it's, it's, it's a, an interesting skill to have and a thing to have to go through. And nowadays it's kind of just like, boop, 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 okay, let's go, right? But then again, you're just, you're moving your challenges to somewhere else, right? You're, you're creating new challenges. You're just like, all right, I've now overcome these challenges. Now I've got these new ones. But um, there's something I wanted to say that I totally forgot now. Something about um, memory. Memory or something. Tank. Anyway, so let's see if that's a memory. Right? <laughs> yeah, <that's> it. <laughs> but uh, so actually, so one of the things I also wanted to address when they get a question is like how to deal with isolation. So one of the more interesting things like I have been doing with is I got involved in like a couple of new hobbies. Oh, right. Yep. So I, don't, I mean, I don't know which. So that that was kind of interesting for me. Like with everything that happened with me last year, it was like okay, I had to close out a gym, things of that sort. Um, for me, I actually had to learn. I had to pretty much learn how to make a business on a computer. And that was very, very new to me. Um, so was, that, that was cool in that sense. I learned how to like sort of compose music on the computer too, which my son's now like super addicted to. <laughs> yeah, so he likes that like a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I, mean, I tried to get myself involved in new hobbies and that kind of stuff. Um, and that, that's been pretty alleviating towards the isolation aspect. Um, you know, feeling enclosed and like, oh, what should I do next? And, you know, trying to find new avenues to be happy in. Right, like find things to be excited about. Like, because we want to be excited, we want to we want to raise our state into a, a energetic level, right? If we don't ever put ourselves into an energetic state, then it's going to be difficult to move through other challenges, right? We have to be able to balance ourselves out, like I said before. But you just have to like rekindle things that you used to enjoy or discover, find things that you enjoy, and then do those things. Like you said, you go out and do new hobbies, or like you could draw, or you could find a way to shift the way, shift your your, your mindset, your state of mind, into feeling a way, ah, oh man, this is hard to describe. So, like take David Doggins for instance. He found a way to change the way he reacts to certain situations. When it's challenging, he gets energized and like, yes, I'm going to do something, push through. So he changed his framework, his internal representations about how he feels about different scenarios. So if you're like, man, I hate being at home alone. This sucks. Isolation sucks. I hate this feeling. Shift it, right? It's hard, right? It can be hard, obviously, if you've never done it before. But if you practice trying, if you practice finding a way to shift it, if you bring up an image or a situation or an event, something that gives you a lot of joy, and then transition over to that which you don't have joy in, right? Mm -hmm. Try to keep yourself in that state of being. During, like, say you're like, I remember this time, but I went and did this thing at Disneyland with this person, whatever, and you feel it. You absolutely feel it like crazy. You're pulling as much of your senses back and just like really living in that moment and then dealing with this, like putting that into the situation you're in now. Like you're like, you're like anchoring where you're now with that feeling. Right, trying to there's a specific way that you can do that, but it wouldn't really work like this. So, anyways, but you can do that. That's something that you can do. You can reframe the way that your brain sees things, the way that your brain feels about certain events, certain situations. So, if you did that, then you can enjoy. Let's say, like, like I enjoy learning. I enjoy um, consuming content that I I like. Right, that I feel like will help me improve, will help me learn, will help me better articulate to you guys, will help me find new ways to reach you in a way that's quick, efficient, and effective, right? And so I super enjoy that. So all that takes is literally me sitting here in front of a computer, right? Listening to stuff in my, in my, in my head. And I really enjoy that. 
So if you find things like that that don't necessarily need the outside availability, then you can be happy in those things. You just have to, you just have to want to be happy in those things, right? If you don't, you're like, nah, I don't really want to be happy in this, then you're not going to find happiness in it. Like, if you enjoy reading books, you're like, nah, I don't really enjoy reading books. But then you're like, oh, wow, this comic book's freaking cool. Oh, I like, I like manga, right? Or like, I like graphic novels. I like this specific series of novels. Or I like a show or whatever. But I think reading would be more beneficial to you um, in feeling better and in engrossing yourself into... So, going into stories and observing stories and walking through stories, kind of like watching shows and stuff, we feel those emotions. Like, we have mirror neurons inside us. I keep, I keep repeating mirror neurons. It's like the word of the day or whatever. But So, mirror neurons are these things inside us that reflect that which we're around. Like, usually with human beings, but it's also, if you, if you view a human being or view an animal that looks like, right, anthropomorphic type of thing, if it looks like it's smiling, then you're like, oh, that feels happy to you, right? That's your mirror neurons being like, hey, I'm going to be empathetic, I'm going to be able to relate, I'm going to be able to feel what that person's feeling or that animal's feeling or whatever. So if you do that too, you can, you can invoke feelings inside yourself. That's one of the things, one of the reasons why I like movies so much. Like, I really like movies and I really like film, I really like stories that people have created visually for us. I really like it because it allows me to, without any effort, tap into so many different emotions, right? It's nice to be able to do that on your own, but it's also not so bad to do that. It's like, um, like some people um, will find internal energy on themselves be able to tap into their neurological energies for doing a workout, really pushing, really going, and then some people use pre-workout, right? I really want to push the edge farther. I feel like Movies are like a pre-workout for my emotions, right? So, and that's kind of the same thing with other people. You have that availability. You're like, oh, if I want to feel happy, watch something happy. Watch humor. Watch, um, I guess that's good enough. I was trying to think of a specific thing that you can watch that's humorous. Stand-up or something, right? If you, want, if you want to feel charged and energized, watch something of action. Watch something of a superhero thing. You're like, man, I feel great. I feel like empowered. And you go out of that movie feeling great because it's invoked that emotion to you. Those neurons... Those mirror neurons inside you start firing. Like, oh man, yeah. So you can do that. You can like hack yourself basically. You'd be like, man, I want to feel good. And like music. Music is big too. Music actually promotes. Oh, I wish I remember what that was called. Oh, dang it. This is a really long thing basically saying uh, neuroplasticity, right? It's this really long thing. I can't remember what it's called. But music promotes plasticity. It promotes the ability for your, your um, neurons to make new connections. Right? So music also helps to promote the way you feel. You can listen to different music to help you feel better, to help you feel less, which obviously you don't want to do that. You don't want to feel depressed or whatever. But like, <laughs> you want to listen to something that you, how, how you want to feel at the time. So you can do that, right? So th there's a lot of different things we can do. And if you have any questions about any more, you can search it, ask us, you know, reach out. That's one thing that's also super, super important. If you want something, one, you have to be aware of the fact that you want it. So many people, it's really hard. They know what they don't want. Stop focusing on that crap. You'll get more of it, okay? <laughs> Focus on what you do want. Find out what you want. It's really hard for most people. They're like, hmm, what do, what do I want? Like, right? Try to be specific. Don't just say, like, don't do generalities. I want to make more money. Here's a dollar. Okay, bye. Good job. <clears throat> right? I want to be happier. Okay, cool. Here's a lollipop. You know what I mean? It's like, don't be generalized. Be specific. Find something specifically that you would want to feel that you want to have. And I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that happened. I saw a trail off and I was like, oh well, crap, I was really hoping I'd get back yeah. on that. That's all good, man. Come here, remind me, where was I? Where was I at? <laughs> you're talking about, um, you're, I think you were talking, talking more about in depth about like, the importance of desires, right? Oh, so, finding out what you want. Finding what you want. Yeah. Like, everyone already knows what they don't want, but they don't really seem to hone in on what they really do want. Um, which is kind of funny because when you kind of break down like what a desire is, I was kind of thinking it's funny. To me, desire is what can I sacrifice in the present to make sure that thing that I want happens later. It's kind of it's it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's interesting. It's almost like an internal contract with yourself. It's a, it's kind of I'm prepared to be a little wooey in the way I'm explaining. But like if I said, hey, I want a million dollars. What am I going to sacrifice for that? I'm probably sacrificing time. I may have to sacrifice relationships in some way, the way I socialize with people. I'm probably going to have to 
sacrifice my body in such a way that, hey, like, hey, this is probably gonna require a lot of work for me to be that rich, yeah. right? So for me, a desire is just what are you sacrificing in the now to create something that's later in the future? And it's, it's a contract result. And you'd be surprised, like, once you realize what you really want, the amount of desires drop. I think that's what it is. It's it's more like okay, yeah, it narrows it down, focuses it, it puts yeah, it into it, one it puts, thing. Yeah, exactly. It don't puts it in the focus. And right? you have and to say no to other things. Yes. That's that's really important. Like your desire, like I'm saying yes to this, so the sacrifices, the things I have to say no to, mm -hmm. are going to grow. Like you, so instead of you being like, it, I can focus on everything that's a no. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. I don't want this. This sucks. This sucks. This sucks. It's so easy. It's all there available. You're swimming in it, and you're like. Mm -hmm. Where's the thing that I do want? Because I have to say no to everything else and be like, this is where I'm putting my focus. Yeah. And I'm going to do that. Instead of allowing my focus to go everywhere to all the different crap that I don't like about my life. Yeah. And I, not only that, I think by just being able to have laser-like focus on things you really do want, it... So, I'm probably going to go to our next question here, but it seems that the universe seems to respond to that if you truly want it. Right? You have zero doubts. Which, that being said, goes into our next question relating to the law of attraction. attraction. Yeah. So, so what is the law of attraction? What do you feel like the law of attraction is? Do you believe in the law of attraction? So law of attraction is obviously a label, right? But it's become like a label, but we can use those words, the law of attraction, as saying like kind of like the law of gravity, right? You made a label to what gravity is. This this force, we don't really know what it is. We feel like it's electromagnet electromagnetic pull. And for some reason, our body, which only has so much... Um, um, metal in it, you know what I mean, and I don't know, I'm not even sure if it's Ferris, to be honest. <clears throat> but anyway, so we have so much metal, why is electromagnetic force holding us, right? Why is this spinning of the earth holding us to the earth, which you would think it would propel us off the earth? So that's an interesting thing to think about, with the, the, the fact of there's this law of this thing called gravity and it's pulling us down, like, that doesn't really make sense. But anyways, we still believe it. <clears throat> so, the law of attraction, like, there's this law that... <clears throat> If you put, so if actually, actually there's a different way of, uh, of, of describing that and explaining it as to it being, what is attraction, right? So is it just that if I say I want to have this, then I'll get it. If I put it out there, then I'll get it. Like, this, this is where it gets very interesting as to how to break it down. Like, does it mean that I'm aligning some kind of frequency of myself to the frequency of other things? Because this is, this is an interesting thing, right? Most people, I imagine, know this. But everything that we know of, everything in existence, has a vibration. Everything in existence is moving. Even though it seems to us, it's perceptive to us that it's not moving, everything has a vibration and is moving, right? So over time, it breaks down. Over time, it changes states. It doesn't just stay the same. It's constantly moving because there are different atoms, there are different molecules, there are different things that are interacting with it, right? Atoms are constantly shifting, giving off electrons and obtaining electrons. Things are constantly moving and shifting and shifting. Even though it seems like a solid object, it seems like a solid thing, it's moving. Other things are interacting with it or changing its state just really slowly compared to us. But if you compare it to the vastness of the universe, what is our time stamp? You know what I mean? What is our... So anyways, the law of attraction is something like that. <clears throat> like, a lot of people like to say it in a way that's easy to absorb is just basically say if you put in abs um, affirmations, if you say certain things like I'm going to be rich, 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 then <clears throat> you're going to get that somehow. It's going to manifest itself some way. But to me, what I believe the law of attraction is and how you can utilize it is that the energies that you, it's kind of like karma, right? The energies that you put out into the world, you will get back. <clears throat> right? So if you put out a bunch of positive energy, you do a bunch of positive things, then you'll get that back, but not in the same way. Right? You're not necessarily, it's kind of like karma, right? So if you do something bad, you're not necessarily going to have something bad to you, per se, in the same way. If you punch them in the face, you're not going to get punched in the face, right? It's something else like that. So we know that with all these crazy interactions that we aren't really aware of, obviously it takes a bit of flexibility in one's mind in order to really grapple with it, to, to conceptualize it, right? To bring it inside your own head to be like, does that make sense to me? <clears throat> so if you think about it, the more that you learn about a subject, the more you learn about something, the more you learn about life, the more you learn about Earth, the more it doesn't seem so mysterious, right? It's like, oh wow, 
And like, so that's how black holes probably work. So that's what's on the earth. We keep finding new and new things all the time. The depth of the earth, when you say, okay, the earth is when blown up, or let's say when it's reduced, if you, if you scale it down, the, the deepest crevice and the tallest mountains aren't anywhere near to if you magnified like a perfect circle that we can create here, right? So if you make this perfect circle orb of glass or whatever, and then you do the same thing, scale down the earth, the earth is more perfect so, yeah. than the thing that we can create. So think about that, right? So that's something that we don't really, we don't know, but once you know, you're like, well, that's, it's crazy, right? It allows you to conceptualize it differently. So that's kind of like how I am now. With all the things that I have been, uh, how do I say this? <clears throat> all the things that I have absorbed, all the things that I've put in front of me, that I have read, that I have seen, that I have experienced, has allowed me to, to better conceptualize what the law of attraction is to me. <clears throat> if I promote myself and create the energy within, which is just like a state of mind, right? So like love is an energy, uh, anger is an energy, and emotion is an energy, we're all energy, we shift that energy to different things. And if you can imagine it being like a different frequency, then that frequency will align with different things around you. If you're upset, other people around you get upset. Why? If you're happy, other people around you can be happy. Why? Right? What about that? There was that mirror neuron thing I was telling you about. There's stuff that we interact with, the electromagnetic pulses that come off our, our, our hearts and our brain. Like, you can look this stuff up. I'm not just like spouting out nonsense. This is legitimate stuff that's been researched and studies have been uh, put out on this stuff. So, now the law of attraction is a little harder for people to do studies on, right? It, it, it's like correlation instead of causation. It's too hard to put a point on because of the amount of variables. You can't make a study that takes away enough variables for it to be like, hey, cool, hey, we got it, right? <clears throat> so you just kind of have to feel it for yourself. Try different things out. See how it affects your life. And be open to be open to like believing it. So there's one thing about so me being a life coach, right? So if I wanted to coach somebody, I can't just go up to some random person and start coaching them. I could, but if they're not willing to be coached, if they're not willing to learn, like here's water, if they're not willing to drink, they're not gonna drink it, right? So that's the same way with this, law of attraction. If I'm telling you all this stuff and I'm saying, hey, if you do this, then this will happen. If you're like, okay, then it's not gonna work for you, right? The same thing with placebo. Why does placebo work? If anybody knows what placebo is, it's basically a sugar pill. Someone gives someone a pill that actually does something that's supposed to create some kind of interaction inside the body, and then they have a sugar pill, a placebo, a thing that doesn't do anything, but the person doesn't know, and they have to not know. Because if they know, it'll shift their, their ability to conceptualize it as belief. So if you can't believe that this will do something, then it won't. But if you believe it will, then it will. Why? Right? So there's that. That's an actual true thing. That's something that they were able to study and be like, okay, cool. It's kind of like the law of attraction in that sense. Do I believe that this will do something? I attract that happening. So what really happens is something inside, right? Inside our bodies, things shift. Our systems are so complex and our brain is so complex and the chemicals within and the way that they all interact is so complex, it's hard for us to fathom. So when things like, these happen, when things like this happen with the placebo, it's hard for us to really take that in. So anyways, law of attraction, right? If you are to, if you can put yourself into a state with enough belief and enough energy, then you will get to that place you're trying to go. If you can visualize something with enough feeling, with enough of your senses, your brain doesn't know the difference, right? Your dreams and your reality, your brain doesn't know the difference while it's in it, right? Daydreams and different things like that. So that's why sometimes you're like, oh, whoa, that was weird. Your brain thought it was reality, right? It doesn't know the difference. <clears throat> so it's good for you to understand that, to understand that well, okay, so if I just create this, oh my gosh, there's some super, super cool studies I just remembered. I wish I could, like, recall the exact studies to be like, hey, this happened, this happened from this person, from this study, from this organization, or from this, um, this um, journal or whatever, like online journal, like from science or from whatever. <clears throat> but there are these studies that are done about either athletes or musicians or different people of certain, I don't want to say talents, but certain, oh, what's the word, certain studies, certain frick, certain things. So certain things that they do, right? There's people that they take groups. There's a group of people that will actually do the motions. There's a group of people that won't do anything. And then there's a group of people that will only do the motions in their head. They will visualize doing the motions. They will visualize doing the keys, the certain song over and over and over and over for the same amount of people that are actually physically doing. 
Same thing with exercise. They visualize doing it inside their head. Same thing with throwing free throws, whatever they do in the head. Each time, the, person, the people that did, the, did it in their head had muscle development as if they were doing it. Right? They all of a sudden could do it. They're like, okay, now play it. Boom. They could play it at the level that they visualized it. This is crazy stuff, right? So the brain doesn't know that you're not actually doing it because it's like firing all the stuff that it should be firing. Or if you see somebody doing something, they get fired inside of this whole mirror on the thing. But like I said, the stuff that you, you, you visualize strongly enough inside your own head, it doesn't, doesn't know the difference between reality and not. And so it grows just as much as if you were doing it in reality. Right? And that's why uh, another reason why people who lose certain aspects of their phys physicalities and then they all of a sudden they can like, gain them back. Like you're never supposed to walk and then they start walking. It's that belief, that ability for them to pull enough energy within in order to direct it to do what it needs to do, to change, right? So law of attraction is kind of like that. You put forth enough energy and put it out there in order to attract that thing, right? So a lot of people say you attract who you are. Right? So if you were like, relationship-wise, you go, why do I keep getting this person? Why do I keep getting this person? Why do I keep inter like, getting into these relationships that I don't want? Well, look at the type of person that you are. What do you do? How are, you, how are your characteristics? And most likely, it's very similar to you. Or very similar to someone that you're very used to, like your parents. Right? That's why, like, oh, usually you go with your mom or you go with your dad. Someone like your mom, someone like your dad. It's so ingrained with you that that's my familiarity, whatever. And that attraction bit gets created. What do you have? <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just like, go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, it was a good to watch. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so, law of attraction is really interesting because you can, it's, it kind of follows the concept of like, you can fake it till you make it. And strangely enough, you, you can. You can actually, by faking it and almost doing gestures in such a way that your brain will kind of adhere to those gestures. So like, let's say you go up to someone that you didn't even like, or you just don't know, and you hug them and you smile anyways. Mm. <laughs> if you were to do that habitually, you will naturally do that habitually. Like, it will be ingrained within your actions. Law of attraction works almost in the same way, in the, in the same manner. You almost kind of like, even if you didn't like what you were pursuing, if you almost pretended to take the, to like and take actions towards that endeavor, whatever it may be, you will eventually create the habits naturally Set and the mindset to tackle those endeavors. So yeah, you may not like running. Okay, you don't like running, but you're like, F it, I'm gonna try to run a quarter mile. Well, you'll find that as you keep pursuing that quarter mile, despite how much you hate it, eventually your mindset will change so that you'll be like, well, crap, I, I can do a quarter mile. I kind of don't mind it anymore. And that's how you create these new habits and, and disciplines. So just keep that in mind that when it comes to like the law of attraction, yeah, it could be something it can, it can apply to not only things that you love and like as well, but and it help you go farther in that particular endeavor. But if it's something you hate, even if you fake it to like whatever it is that you may hate, you can eventually like it. Like it's it's that powerful, which is just kind of weird how that works. Um, it kind of makes me question about my own like <laughs> manners. Yeah, it's yeah, so <laughs> another habit. <laughs> another interesting thing, thing that's really good and could potentially be difficult to do in the moment, but. If you're particularly feeling depressed, or you're particularly feeling upset, or you don't really feel that great, right? <clears throat> you're just not really, you don't have much energy, you're like, God, man, I really hate today. Whatever. Something like that. Force yourself to laugh, right? This is something everybody knows, but practice it, right? You may know, you may have seen, you may have seen other people know, you're like, oh, okay, cool, that's cool for them, or whatever. Try it. Really try it. Just start fake laughing. I'm already almost going to laugh just thinking about fake laughing. So just, <laughs> just... Fake laugh, and even crappy fake laugh. You're like, ha, 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 <laughs> and then you'll just start laughing naturally. And your brain will pick up on it, the, phys the, the physiology that you are presenting, right? Because there's a feedback loop. And like I, I mentioned before in one of my posts, your heart actually gives more feedback to your brain than your brain gives to your heart, right? And when you, when you have these feelings like, man, I feel it in my heart, or like you feel like this love, or these different things that we associate with love, right? When you feel those things there, and then we're like, oh man, I just have this gut feeling, right? They have markers. The information that you're getting has markers, and that's why it feels that way. It feels like it's coming from a different area. It feels like it's coming from, yeah, I don't want to go there. It feels like it's going from different areas of the body, right? Because it is. And then we associate it with that, with like, with like love, right? It comes from the heart. So when things happen, we see it, we visualize it, or whatever, 
our heart will start to change. It will start to change rhythm. And that feedback goes up to the brain to be like, hey, when this happens, normally something like this has happened. When it starts to pump in this way, this, this is what that means. So it gets its feedback to the brain to be like, oh, that's what it is. And if you start laughing, it's like, hey, I know what that means. It means we're happy. So then it cycles that loop inside yourself. You can do the same thing with the law of attraction. You're like, you're hacking into your own systems. So the law of attraction allows you to tap into that in order to make that a loop you want to have happen. And unfortunately, this is one thing I've always had a kind of a struggle with, right? So bad habits seem to be way more easily, easily made than good habits. But that's only because we put focus on the bad habits, right? We have a lot of good habits too. We just don't think of them as good habits because they're beneficial, because we're walking through them and they we're benefiting from it. The only thing that actually put focus on are the ones that do not do good for us. And we're like, oh man, bad habits are so easy to, to come in. Why can't I make good habits like that? You made a crap ton of good habits, right? You get up in the morning. You tie your shoes. You put your pants on. You take a shower. You brush your teeth. You eat, right? You do all these things that are positive habits, the positive routines that you've created. And then when you create a bad habit that doesn't exactly benefit you, doesn't help you, it's still a habit, it's still a thing that got some kind of a reward for some reason, and then you move forward in it, you keep doing it. And then in order to break it per se, you don't have to really break a bad habit, you just overlap it. You have you do something with the triggers that you were that used to be there and had yourself do something else. Like I used to I used to eat a donut in the morning, right? Instead of eating a donut, wherever that donut was that I would get it, it would take that trigger point to be like, oh, there's a donut. And then you would introduce something else, a different action. Instead of it, what you would normally do would grab that, you'd grab something else and eat that instead. And you would change that up, right? So you'd use the same energy, because it's really what happens. You're like, oh man, that energy of that habit of that moving forward, the dopamine hit, dopamine hit, I know it's coming, I know it's coming. So it's walking you through that process inside your body, inside your brain, you're like, keep going, that's something that's gonna happen, it's gonna be good, it's gonna throw off a bunch of stuff that we like, and then you change it by using that motion for something else, <clears throat> like um, if you would hit the snooze button or whatever, you use that same energy like, I would do this, instead of thinking, you're like, I'm gonna roll over and grab my shoes, I'm gonna roll over and grab something else, right? You take that action and introduce something else instead. You're using that energy for something else, you're redirecting it. But, um, <clears throat> Awesome, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so, I hate it when it happens. I absolutely hate it when it happens. Yeah, when you go on your tangents. So, yeah, but okay. so, so good habits. So good habits. The, one, the biggest thing, the whole reason why I even started this whole rant about habits is that habits, it seems like, okay, depending on who you're talking to, it'll be anywhere from like 20 to 90 days. It's crazy, right? So depending on who you're talking to, you're like, well, it will take you 27 days, it will take you 31 days, it will take you 17 days, 21 days, 90 days, right? To really get that to stick, to become, so because when you start something, <clears throat> a connection happens inside your brain, or rather a bunch of connections. So in a certain scenario, there's certain things that happen, there's a lot of feedback that you're getting, a lot of sensory, sensory inputs that you're getting, right? <clears throat> and those sensory inputs that you're getting are all happening at that same time in that event. So if it's something that you want to have a good habit of doing, it's there and it's firing and it's like, okay, they make connections to be like, this is a good thing, we'll remember this next time. When, a, when these events happen, these other portions of the brain fire at, at a sequence, it's like, bloop, this sequence of firing in the brain means this, right? So if you do it over and over and over and over again, then it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. More myelin gets put over the, the axons of the neurons, right? Makes them stronger and makes that signal go through better and it just makes it stronger and stronger. It feels like it gets thicker, it becomes a tree trunk rather than just a little twig and it's not easily disconnected. So, yeah, basically that. That's what's happening inside the brain. <clears throat> you can make good habits, but it, unfortunately it takes consistent action. It takes consistent, or actually there's also a way to do it to where if your emotional state, the amount of energy you have within that's, that's in that moment, like if it's traumatic, Something like everything's heightened. You have super focus. So you have emotion and focus. I think uh, Jim Quick talks about this a lot to help with memory, right? If you want to remember something, attach it to something, anchor it to something, right? So like, hey, I want to remember a sequence of numbers, a sequence of events. You're like, okay, well, what do I know well? I know this house that I grew up in. It has all these rooms. It has these different furniture. Cool. Put these things on the bits of furniture. Put these things in the rooms and then walk through the house as you're recalling these things. Oh, I know this. Or associate it with a picture. Tree, uh, two is tree, or three is tree. 
to his shoe, right? And then you like associate a picture with the thing, and then you walk through the the scene, like, well, I was going through, it's like a story, right? You create a story. That's why we like stories so much. It helps us to flow through the way that our brain works. But anyways, yeah, so you can get habits to work if you, if you can get habits to work like now, if you have a strong, emotional, focused, emotional, really high energy moment. And that's why full immersion is so good and why Tony Robbins does so awesome with people is because he brings so much in. He involves the physicality, involves the environment, involves other people's energy, and your own and really bringing it out, really getting you to high focus and then it sticks, right? So you can either do it over time and you're like, I really hate this, I really hate this, I really hate this, I really hate this, and it'll take a long freaking time. But if you can tap into something you really love, this was saying like anchoring a good feeling with one that you don't like or a situation you don't like, doing that same thing while you practice this stuff. You're like, all right, I want this to be a good thing. This is my compelling future, say. Like, this is what I'm going to get out of this. I know if I do this every day, I will get this, I'll become this, I'll feel this, I'll, this is the way I feel. And you attach that to each time you do it, it'll take less time for you to actually get that habit instilled. It'll take less time for that to become a strong neural network inside your head for that habit. Bam. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually pushing an hour here already. Oh, okay, okay. So what was the last question? Let's get to that. You said that classes are Class complementary. Yes. Why? So yes, class are complementary. <laughs> Why? Very simple. Minimize the amount of excuses. So, you know, one of the things I deal with a lot of times with me being in the fitness industry is just excuses. And they happen. And sometimes some of them are very, some are very legitimate. You know what I mean? But, you know, when, when an opportunity comes by and goes, hey, like, this is a free class. Like, I'm, all my classes are free, by the way. Just kind of throwing that out there. You have a chance to crash class anytime, just hit me up, DM me, I'll send you the link. Not very difficult. But my goal is I want to see what kind of culture can be made if the opportunities itself are present. And it's kind of funny because there's a there's a value issue here. So it's funny, when things are free, most people don't see it in terms of high value. Understandable, right? Um, but what I'm trying to do here is see what happens when I have something that's that can be in relatively high value if it was to be free for free. In other words, like if someone just gave me a million dollars, how would you feel about that? Um, kind of interesting thought experiment in itself, but when it comes to our bodies, that's kind of the way, the way it should be approached. It's like, all right, well, here, I'm going to give you a chance to take this luxury and take advantage of it. Just take advantage of this luxury. See what happens. See how you take on it. And right now when we did in classes and everything like that, it's, don't get me wrong, class for growing. It's pretty interesting watching that grow. Mm -hmm. um, watching people try to like, spread the word and, and, and share the link with other people. But I'm, I'm kind of particularly tired of the excuse that either one, I don't have the time or um, I, or finances in a way. So, I mean, I can understand finances in terms of specific areas, but I like to say like, hey, eating healthy is expensive. Like to me, that's horse crap. Um, <laughs> Reallocation of funds. You just have to like, this is where everything's going now. I just have to shift it up. Yeah. That's all that really is. And it's just something that you haven't had to do before. So it's, it's foreign, it's different. But if you were to walk through it, you're like, oh wow, shoot. I actually spend the same or less. Yeah. Most of the time if you do it right, you can actually spend less. Yeah. Um, just so there's that aspect. But yeah, me, what I want to do is present the opportunity to like, hey, like, here's the crash class. It's free. It's uh, no money. There's no gimmick behind it. It's like, hey, it's a, it's a 30 minute core cardio class. Super, super simple. But I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I do it, I was like, oh man, it kicks my butt. But that's good. We need that, right? We need to have consistent exercise, especially now. Like, the more, sorry to cut you off, Mark, but. The lack of movement, like when I had used to have my job, when I used to be there, I was really active, right? Your TDEE, my TDEE, is that right? TDEE, yeah, my TDEE, my TDEE, totally TDE, yeah, my TDEE was way higher, right? Well, all my other habits of eating and other things are ingrained in me, and my TDEE lowers, my intake doesn't lower because I'm used to it. What do you think is going to happen, right? Not only are my muscles going to atrophy, but also I'm not going to be burning as high as I was, so now I'm going to start gaining weight, right? Or I'm going to start it, well, 
Yeah, I'm just saying that's what happens to people. Like I was aware of it, so I started to shift certain things, but that's what happens to people. They're used to these certain situations, and then when something changes, they don't adapt accordingly. Yeah. So that's why I do my classes for free. My, class, my goal with me making the classes for free, yeah, part of this exposure doesn't be wrong, but the other aspect is like I'm I'm curious what people will do when they have something that a luxury or a value literally handed to them. It's like, all right, how are you gonna take advantage of this? And what kind of cultures what kind of culture does that make? Um, that I'm also particularly curious about too. So don't get me wrong, part of it is a thought of experiments, but part of it is just like, like, hey, like you can't complain that you're out of shape if you're not taking advantage of the opportunities that lie ahead of you. You know? Um, you know, you and I we use FAQ Friday to help educate you guys. You know, it's not like you take a dollar or anything like that. I mean, if you want to donate and help out with that, but yeah. <laughs> but our, our job in a sense is to provide you guys the value that you guys need so that you guys can move yourselves in, in a positive light moving forward with your life. Of course, as Ben always talks about, you know, um, mind, for, for, I could say fortifying your mindset, right? That's usually the way I look at it, what he does to help you guys overcome certain life obstacles. And then I always think about it myself as putting yourself in a, in a physical fit way so that you guys can overcome whatever obstacles you guys may be going through, whether it's related to health, or just maybe just being able to move accordingly. Yeah, enjoy your life more, enjoy your family more, enjoy your kids more, to be able to move, to be able to chase them around, to be able to not get exhausted while going up the stairs, right? Like, nobody really wants that life. People are like, oh man, my life's fine, like, if I eat whatever the heck I want, I do what I want, I live it, I love my life, and then you like, you can't move around, you can't go do anywhere. And But for some reason, they're willing to sacrifice that, right? So it's like, also, people wait till retirement to actually try to do something they love. Why are you gonna wait till then? Do it now, right? Like that's, I think that's a good push that we should really try to do is like, hey, we really need to change our mindsets now so that we can actually enjoy our lives now. Don't wait to retirement when you're all broken down and you can't really do anything anymore. You're like, finally, I get to relax. I get to rest. Dude, do it now. Be creative. Find something that you can do in order to benefit your life now. Live, don't like, like I don't want it to be like the YOLO type of mentality where like, <laughs> let's blow all our money now and then we're going to have to hope that the government supply like helps us out during retirement that's not a good idea i mean we need to take initiative and have a have a good direction actually do things smartly listen to people that have done things and that are doing things that you want to do and emulate do like do what they're doing see what they're doing and try to attach that into your own life adopt it like mark's doing this free class take those take that information of the different exercises he's doing and apply it to your life right go to a class four six five times whatever and take those exercises and be like, how can I improve on this? This is great. And if you have issues with being, like maintaining it, if you have issues with finding out a time to actually do it, allocating the time, then ask for help. That was, my God, that was one of the things that I lost my track, that train of thought on, was a really, really, really important thing to really absorb, really understand. Is, and and now I know it came from the Bible, I'm pretty sure, it came from the Bible or religion or whatever, but it's so true, it's ridiculous, right? Ask and you shall receive. If you want something, ask, ask, ask. Get that information. Ask somebody, right? You don't know until you ask. Kind of like for directions, right? I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. I don't want to ask, I don't want to ask. I'll figure it out. Dude, your thinking got you here. Get somebody else's thinking to get you out, right? Einstein told you that. We like Einstein. Let's listen to him, <laughs> right? But I mean, there's, there's so much truth to that. So not just ask, right? It's knock and you sh and knock and it shall be opened unto you. Or knock at opportunities. When an opportunity comes, Knock at it. Be like, okay, cool. Jump into it. Try for that thing. Go for it. Take initiative. Right? So it's asking you shall receive. Knock. And then there's something else. There's ask. Knock. Dang it. I wish I didn't forget that. Ask. And you shall receive. Knock. And show you open up you. Someone knows it. I know someone knows it. Tell me. Come on. <laughs> someone knows it. I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, but they are they're literally something that you need to absorb into your core. Because it will help you with everything in life. Mm -hmm. It's something like initiative, right? Initiative is something that will help you in life. Allowing yourself to take that step. Allowing yourself to find the hole. Find the thing that's missing. Find the thing that you can help somebody with, right? Like initiative is you're helping your dad or somebody work on the car. You see a tool fall and you just look at it and you're like, and you, he obviously needs it. And you're just like, he didn't ask me to get it, so I'm not going to get it. Right? That's not taking initiative. You see something that needs to, that could, you could do. You're like, oh, he, oh, here we go. That's taking initiative. Same thing with the job. You notice something that has that is being neglected. You notice something that it can be improved on. 
Take initiative. Go towards it. Do something about it, right? And do the same thing in your own life. Take initiative in the fact that you can utilize his free courses, right? This will improve my life. Like, oh man, I can learn from that. Even a small way, right? And then that thing, little things that you do compound. They stack. When you do something like that, like, who is it? Jim Rohn said something like, um, I decided, so the one act of walking around the block motivated me to eat an apple a day. Eating an apple a day motivated me to read a book about health. Reading a book about health motivated me to actually start eating healthy. Eating healthy motivated me to do something else, to feel that my, my cognitive ability was higher. I started journaling. I started doing this. I started feeling better about myself. All these things start to stack, right? Discipline stack on the discipline. So if you get this free discipline, right, then you can stack other things. You can use it for other reasons. You can gain yourself, grow yourself in it, and do more with your own life. Do more for others, right? So I think it's really, really important. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and shall be run and seek. seek and you shall find. Thanks. Who said it? Kimberly. Thanks, Kimberly. Kimberly. <laughs> Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, seek and you shall find, right? If you're looking for something, you need something, look for it, right? You're like, man, I don't know how to do this, or I should do this. Look for a result. Look for a way for someone to give you results. Like, I don't want, like, if there's anybody out there who's like, I don't like the way that I feel. I don't like the way that I, I look in the mirror. I don't like, I, I should do this. If you're saying I should to yourself, that's something that you need to do, right? Something that will improve on your life. So if you say, I should, I should walk, or I should run, or I should do something, you should do it. Just do it, right? <laughs> Seek it out. Ask us. That's why we keep doing, like I said, this Epic Friday. Ask. You will get something. You'll get some kind of information. You will learn something. You'll get a new perspective. You'll find something better. You'll grow as a person. We want to grow. We want to become better. And for anybody that doesn't want to become better, I'm sorry. I hope you're like is great. I really do. But I feel like the progression through life is what success really is, right? Earl Nightingale says, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal, right? The progressive, the pro progressive realization of a worthy ideal. That's success. You progressing through it. Not necessarily making the goal, which is part of your ultimate progression, right? Goals are like milestones. But the progression itself, the pursuit, the pursuit, yeah, the pursuit itself, you being in action, you being in motion, moving towards, that is what you want to, like, that's what your habit should be, the action of, not me getting to this spot, right? And that's what we're trying to do. He's trying to do that physically, nutritionally, and I'm trying to do it mentally, right? Organizationally, for your life, putting everything together, finding a way to step you through something, finding a way to to create the systems that you need in order to progress through life, in order to make it easier, helpful, and have more opportunities available to you, right? This is really, really important stuff. I, I think so. It's really, really important stuff. It's a good note to end on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. All right, y'all. So if you guys- Happy Valentine's Day. Day. Yeah, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, so hope you guys have all enjoyed that weekend, whatever that may entail. Um, if you guys want to get a hold of us or send us more questions, you guys are more than welcome to get a hold of us at onyourmarket.fit. And then we're getting ready to push forward with LinkedIn. Yeah, so I have, we have a LinkedIn account, but there's nothing really on there yet. We haven't really uh, figured out how we're going to curate the content for LinkedIn to make it so that it's, it's, it's something that's of value for that platform, right? We don't want to just start throwing stuff on there. We want to put something on there that people can really use. They can really eat. They can really chew on. Eat. I like to say that. They really chew on. So I want to make sure that before we sign off that we give credit where credit is due and we... Um, uh, there was another word that I wanted to use, but basically that's fine. So, oh, shout out. We want to give shout outs to a couple people. So, Kim, thanks for watching. Thanks for being amazing. Matt Jewell, thank you for being amazing. If you're watching this or you're not or whatever, I know you're probably actually on your ride here. But thank you guys for all your support. Antoinette, thank you for the question. And uh, did you get a question from somebody else that we want no. to shout out? Okay. So, but yeah, thank you for your questions. Thank you for your involvement. Thank you for your engagement. And thank you for taking initiative. Thank you for pursuing something beneficial in your life. Thank you for believing in us and um, engaging with us, right? Helping us to, to feel that we're doing something positive. And if there's anything that you feel like we can improve on, anything else that you would like to learn or grow in, please send that information our way. And this is how we get better. This is how we grow. This is how we impact more people. And that's what we want to do, right? That's what this company is about. Impacting people's lives so that they grow and that they grow others. So that we grow as, as a world. It grows as a species. Or at least right now, 
in our, our native country in North America, but hopefully, eventually, obviously, worldwide. We want to be worldwide. We want to be multicultural, multi-international. We want to be around and be like, hey, human beings are very similar, and we know how to help you guys out. Physically, emotionally, um, mentally, and structure organized, all that stuff. So, thanks to everybody. Thank you for joining us on Epic Friday. Look forward to us on next Epic Friday. And make sure to hit us up. Give us anything that you have, these burning questions inside, right? Just write it out there. Put it on a, an email. It's not going to be out into the uh, multiverse of everybody else. We'll just read it so you don't have to worry about it being pushed out to me. If you don't want us to be, if you don't want us to shout out, shout you out, that's fine. You know, can be anonymous and we'll just take those questions on to help us feed that information on the people because we know that that question you had, a lot of other people have. So, with that, I think we're going to close. We're going to take off. I think we're good here. Yeah, so again, thanks everybody. I appreciate it. Oh, Structure Saturday is tomorrow event. Yeah, Structure Saturday. See that tomorrow? It's going to be at 9. By the way, so tomorrow at 9, I'm going to do Structure Saturdays. So, see me there. 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Pacific Standard, yes, thank you. All right, so that's it. Later. We're done. Thanks everybody for joining us.